Well, we have now this, if you want to call them second generation BTK inhibitors, and the two main ones that are, are in clinical trials and in, in registration trials are acalabrutinib and uh, zanabrutinib. And all of these sort of second generation uh, BTK inhibitors have the putative advantage that they are more targeted towards BTK. So in other words, with ibrutinib, it's actually felt that some of the toxicities are off-target effects, not from inhibiting BTK itself. So for example, the bleeding that you see um, in the hereditary disorder in boys who are born with mutations in BTK, they don't have any bleeding problems. So it's felt that it might be inhibition of some of these other kinases. So the advantage of some of the newer uh, BTK inhibitors is that the IC50 for the other kinases is significantly higher than it is for BTK. And so one would hope there's less off-target uh, activity and perhaps less side effects for that very reason. Uh, in the trial that we just talked about with acalabrutinib and obinutuzumab, for example, there were about 40-something patients who was only one episode of atrial fibrillation. So that, there is a suggestion that that toxicity, for example, may be decreased because with ibrutinib it's about 10 to 12 percent. But the numbers with acalabrutinib are small, so, but there is a suggestion that there might be less toxicity. So far, all the efficacy data for these drugs uh, looks very good. But then the efficacy data for ibrutinib is very good also. So it's, it, it, it's going to be hard to see differences. Although there is a randomized trial specifically with acalabrutinib versus ibrutinib in relapsed patients with CLL and high-risk disease defined as 17P deletion or 11Q deletion. And that trial is fully accrued. We just haven't seen any uh, data from that trial, but that will be very interesting because that's the only head-to-head -head data uh, that I'm aware of. There's also now another category of BTK inhibitors called the non-covalent uh, binding ones. So the advantage here is that we know in a significant fraction of patients who develop clinical resistance to ibrutinib, they have a BTK mutation, and that's what renders them resistant. And that's in the ATP binding site. So the advantage, again, putative advantage of these non-covalent inhibitors is that they bind in a completely separate site. So they should be active even in the setting of ibrutinib resistance, as well as against the wild type. And there are a number of those uh, drugs that are all very early in phase one trials.